So a uh, little fun fact, there's no good way to do this. All right, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This sucks. This seal does not fit. This is a bad idea. Sorry. Am I doing this wrong? I don't know. Follow my channel. You guys will see if my car doesn't run. Okay. <laughs> I cannot procrastinate any longer today. We are gonna build the hybrid Renesis engine for my RX-8. All of the parts are here. When I say build, it is now a verb. It is not a noun. We are physically assembling this engine today. One thing I haven't talked about on my channel much is I get super fucking anxious sometimes working on cars, just like depending on what it is. And I have legitimately lost sleep knowing that this is coming up. I'm not joking. I woke up at 4 a.m. multiple times and thought about the fact that first of all, I spent way too much money way too quickly getting the rest of this parts in. And second of all, just the idea that I have to assemble the $6,000 engine myself. I actually have found some factory Mazda service manuals. Uh, it calls everything out, including Mazda factory specs for the 13B MSP. Before we continue on, I wanna make one thing clear. I'm not showing you how to build a Renesis engine. I don't know how to build a Renesis engine. Atkins Rotary so far has made this really easy. They've got a bunch of notes. Oh my God, thank you so much, Atkins Rotary. I am doing this to document what I did so that if there's an issue with my engine or if we find out something the hard way, you guys can watch this and go, oh, that's what he did wrong. This is what we all want to improve. I am doing this for the community. I'm watching Rad Potential on YouTube. If you guys want to see how to assemble a rotary engine, go watch his video. Uh, and I've just kind of made a little workspace. What I've done is just put down this plastic tray. That way I can spray cleaner and such and do whatever else I got to do. Uh, and it doesn't soak into the table. But what we're going to do is we're going to start by assembling the smallest oil control ring. I have a spring, which is directional. I'm going to talk about that in a second. I've got the smallest control ring. There should be four total, uh, two of different sizes. And then we've also got the O-ring that matches. Just so you guys know, these O-rings uh, don't just fit right in. We're gonna have to work on this, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do that here in a minute, at least what I'm going to do. We have found our very front rotor. And what we did, since I had to buy multiple new rotors and get everything machined, uh, we're gonna look at the faces of the rotor and they're gonna say FB, FD, FE, FA. What that is, that's a side of the motor, front or rear, F or R, and then a weight, A, B, C, D, E, I think all the way down to G. Mine says F, C. This is a front rotor, C weighted. So I know this is my front rotor. I am going to orient it as such by putting the gear, which is going to be on the outside of the engine, or in this case, the front of the front rotor to my left. And I'm gonna say this is my front of my engine. So we are working on the front most face of all the rotors. Just keep that in mind. The front face of the front rotor. The front rotor outer face needs a white and pink control ring spring. Atkins Rotary has very kindly painted these for us. That already came from Mazda like that. Mine's got white on it, I confirmed. What we're also gonna be looking for is the left edge of this spring to be curving down. You can't get this wrong because if you flip it, again, the left edge is facing down. So this is going to be a front spring. So this is gonna go on the front of rotor one or the front of rotor two. This is a little confusing, but now that I've watched a couple videos, I'm figuring it out. What we want to do is we're gonna drop this into the rotor with this downward slope inside of a nick in the rotor. I'm not gonna be able to get all these on video right inside, and I'm gonna be very careful to get this downward slope inside of that divot. Now, if you guys have a plastic pick, this would be a good time to use it. You just wanna make sure that that's down inside of that divot. And my understanding is this should not want to walk around. I'm using just very light pressure and it does not want to come out of that groove easily. So I think we're on the right edge. Uh, and by the way, guys, if I'm doing something wrong, don't be afraid to call it out in the comments. Uh, this isn't for me at this point. The engine will already have been built, but this will be for you guys. Don't let multiple other people make the mistake that I make. If you guys are rotary experts, post it in my comments. Flame me, I don't care. Okay, so it looks like what we want to do per the factory Mazda manual is we want to try to get this divot on this control ring uh, container and actually line this up so that this upward facing edge of the spring, because you're gonna have that downward facing and then the upward facing, we want that upward facing to be in here. And I'm gonna just try to line this up and then we'll focus on getting this pressed in. <laughs> okay, so a uh, little fun fact. There's no good way to do this, by the way. You just gotta, Get it close. Okay, so for the next control ring, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go a size up. Now the groove is on the inside. 
and I'm gonna suspect that this isn't gonna take a whole lot to try to get in there, but I'm still gonna lube this up. Um, and then also we still have a spring. Again, we have the front rotor, front side, inner and outer are both gonna be white. Uh, and we're gonna verify that, but again, holding this in our left hand, thank you very much to Rad Potential. The groove is gonna go on the down slope on the left hand side. So I'm going to assemble this until the camera dies. Drop this down in here. There's actually multiple indentations and the manual states that any of them are okay. Just checking to make sure that this edge is catching in this little hole and it does. We're gonna drop this inside of our ring. Wow, I thought the other one was gonna be more difficult, but no, this one is actually more difficult. Okay, so for the control rings where the O-rings go on the inside, you are gonna swear up and down that the O-rings are too big. They are not, they just, they fit in there and they take up every last bit of space they need. I set mine on the table and then I essentially drop the O-ring in and just focus on getting the O-ring inside of the control ring and then work on getting it to take up the space. Don't sit there with it hanging over the edge, trying to pop it in, pop it in, because every single time you try to pop it in, it's pulling slack elsewhere. So yeah, they go in, they're not too large. I thought they were. Okay, so I think I finally got my second wheel control ring in. It's got a nice spring to it in most places. The raised areas of your oil control ring, the areas that have not properly seated, aren't sp that springy. This side is a little tight. I'm gonna work this. I mean, you can feel a clear difference. This side is really springy. It's ready to go. This side is pretty tight. Okay, so I think I have my control ring seated. Everything's got a nice little spring to it, which is good. That's exactly what you want. All right, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This sucks. I'll be honest, my tuner slash machinist told me, no, don't buy the pre-cut seals. They're not always, you know, just about right. You should really cut them. If I had known then what I know now, I would not be cutting them. I am not super skilled with a set of gauges. I think I've got a decent system down now, but I don't know if I'm accurate enough for it to really match. I don't know, maybe I'm doubting myself a little bit too much. First thing you're gonna do, you're gonna assemble all your side seal springs on one face. You're gonna assemble your corner seal springs and you're gonna assemble your corner seals. And then you wanna make sure you label these. What I'm doing is FA for front A, front B, front C, and then on the other side, I don't wanna flip it over because my stuff will fall. On the other side is F1, F2, and F3. And then I've got baggies with exactly what goes there. Now, obviously the side seals are on the side, so I'm going to the right. So if it's FA, the side seal is on the right. If it's FB, the side seal is on the right. I did some testing on a broken rotor with some bad seals that I knew I had for my old engine. I would highly, highly recommend you do the same. I do not recommend you jump right in unless you have a spare set of seals. And if you haven't purchased seals yet, I would go ahead and recommend you buy an extra seal or two. Now I've already done all these, so uh, I kind of got a method to the madness. Uh, this is a Mazda seal. It's gonna have a chamfer on one side. We're gonna wanna note that. The other side is gonna be flat. But what you're, what you're gonna notice is this seal does not fit. It simply is too long, and that's exactly how they come. Now, you can sit here and you can run this against your grinder and you bah, bah, my, I got a drill on mine, I'll show you. You bah, I don't, I'm not doing that. I've got a little method where I'm making a thin line on the end of the seal. Um, for reference, that's mine. I made, now, I am using snips. Uh, I'm just gonna take it, I'm just gonna line my snips up. I'm just, I'm not taking a whole lot off. Just a very small amount. So all I've done is just save myself a little bit of time in grinding, uh, but we still have not gotten anywhere close to where we need to be. Talking with my machinist and tuner, he is telling me that you can run 16 to 18 thou, that is the target. He did say if you go over and you hit 20 thou, it's not the end of the world, but I would try to shop that around and try to get it to fit in tighter somewhere else. There are plenty of expensive ways to do this. Uh, drill presses, all kinds of fancy stuff. I don't have that. I bought this ring gap tool and I found out my drill fits on the edge. I've got it on the slowest speed setting. And then what I'm doing is I'm going max speed. So try to keep as many variables constant as possible. So I'm going max speed. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape that side that I just snipped. And I've also got a couple marks on my ring gap tool. These marks I made by taking a chamfered edge, lining it up, and then I just kind of marked my chamfer. My understanding, and for my tuner and my machine, is he said, don't stress about the chamfer too much. It's not the end of the world, but you do want to try to get it somewhat close. So 
All we're gonna do is I'm gonna stick my drill in here, start cutting. I know I gotta cut quite a bit, so I'm gonna run this for a minute. All right, so I've, I've just cut it some decent amount of length off to where I think I'm gonna be close. Now you're gonna end up getting a burr on the, on the outer edge, so I'm gonna run that across the top of the disc. Just to kind of try to smooth that out. Make sure that we place our side seal down. It is chamfered, so you wanna make sure you get the small side of the chamfer into the slot. Uh, you'll know because it won't set down all the way. So if it's not gonna go in, don't fight it too much, try flipping it. All right. This is good. I, I've already made some good progress. My side seal is now fitting in. Uh, there's not a decent gap, so I know I'm gonna have to cut more off just from experience. The Mazda ma manual says that you wanna put a, a six thou shim into each side of the rotor. Uh, so two sides just like this. I've only got one. So what I'm doing is I'm going lengthwise. If this is a bad idea, sorry. As I'm putting a feeler gauge in there, it's, it's gonna wanna try to push out to allow the gauge in. It's something that I've kind of gotten around. Am I doing this wrong? I don't know. Follow my channel, you guys will see if my car doesn't run. That's exactly why I'm documenting this. If I do something stupid, you guys don't do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just use my nail, press this all the way back. I'm gonna try to run this in. Yeah, so I can't even run a 16 thou in. Not only that, but it's trying to push that side seal out of the way. So I gotta go get more material. I'm not gonna take you guys with me. But uh, yeah. Now, if I give you guys one piece of advice, do not do this, stop, and then come back to it later. Your like amount of time to grind, pressure, everything's gonna be different, I'm just gonna tell you. And you're gonna be sitting there like, ah, oh, I didn't grind enough off, or wow, I almost grounded too much off. I've been sitting here doing this all four hours. I've got a pretty good feel for it, I feel like. Tell, oh, okay, with a ton of force, I can get the 16 dial in, but that's not good, because it's also bowing the seal out. So I'm gonna pull some more off. Okay, so we got another real quick spec to check and that is the height of the protrusion for our corner seals. I got a set of calipers here. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use this bit down here. We're gonna press down and then this is gonna close and tell us our gap. The factory manual says at least half a millimeter. I am getting one and a half. Okay, so now we are gonna check my apex seal clearances as we did have to deepen my apex seal groove. So what I've done is I've assembled both my corner seals and my corner seal springs on both sides. And then I've also dropped in both of my apex seal springs. My feeler gauge is here, which I hate using. And we are testing 500th of a millimeter all the way up to 10th of a millimeter, which is essentially the range. Because the spec is like 42 thousandths of a millimeter all the way up to 101. So I've been starting with this 0.05. And this thing's pretty thin, so it's not gonna push, but it will drag. And it's actually dragging pretty well. I'm gonna test a 600th. This one's pretty tight compared to the others. Okay, this is actually the tightest one yet. This is at five hundredths, but the five hundredths will go right in and then pull right out. All right, so that one's done. Now we'll just move on. We're actually going to make sure that we label this and we understand exactly where this needs to go. And then we're gonna continue on. All right, I got my buddy's torque wrench maxed out to 300 pound feet. Oh my God, I'm at 160 pound feet. And this fucking, this stand is making me nervous, bro. Yeah, I don't trust that. I don't trust that. So right now I'm installing the oil injectors. One fact that you're gonna need RX-7 oil injectors. The RX-8 oil injectors just flat out won't fit. You know, has anybody ever tried tasting one of these gaskets? 